Okay, the project for today at Bob's house is we're replacing the serpentine drive belt on his Chevy HHR. We were driving, um, he was driving in it yesterday and the belt fell off. We knew that because the air conditioning stopped working, but we were able to drive back home because the other stuff worked without the serpentine belt. So fortunately the way it was designed, it doesn't leave you stranded when the serpentine belt breaks. It doesn't, uh, it's not part of the timing belt system either, so it doesn't end up crunching your valves up. So we drove back home. And then I uh, went and got a serpentine belt. And you can hear Bob making all that noise. He's going to jack it up, and we're going to have to remove actually the wheel and the wheel well to get to that tensioner pulley back there. <laughs> yeah, Vanna White. <laughs> Okay, we're going to try to see if we can just take this front panel off and have enough access to it instead of taking the whole wheel well off. We'll see. We might be able to, we might not. Okay, we've got the bottom part of the panel off and we're going to just stop here and see if we can actually reach back in there and be able to adjust the tension on the idler pulley. If you can see in the center of the frame back there, you can see the edge of it. We've got to get a tool on it and then move it just a little bit as Bob puts the belt on. Maybe what I'll do is I'll reach in there and uh, with a wrench or something reduce the tension and if we just slip it over then we're home free. If not, then we got to do like they do on YouTube and just remove some more of this stuff here. But hoping we don't have to, we'll see what we can accomplish. Okay, for your viewers, this is what, right now, there's a little, you can kind of see there's a square hole there where you put... Uh, the right kind of breaker bar in but there's nothing that can fit in there with the clearance so what you're gonna do is make this idler pulley go up and I've actually found by just pressing on it with a screwdriver I can actually force it to go up so we're just gonna get some other piece of tool and I'm just gonna jam it right up against there and just push up on it so that that relieves the tension and then Bob can um, once we get it around the idler pulley here we'll leave it off of this bottom pulley and then so I'll just take the pressure off of it with that and then he'll be able to slip it over that hopefully. Okay what I did was I forced it up about half an inch and I just jammed this piece of wood so now there's less tension on it so we should be able to get it to go around. Now I may have actually blocked, I don't know, the way our thing is this may be a good idea, it may not because depending on how we have to string this um, belt, yeah there's Bob's fingers um, I may have to move this out of the way and hold it anyway for him to get the belt around, but that's okay. I can do it either way. I can take the piece of wood back up and just hold it for a minute while Bob slips the wood, but that's what we're going to do. It's the best idea we have. Here is our solution. We had to actually use a scissor jack and actually put force up into that idler pulley because we needed every last ounce of uh, pressure so that I could... We left it. We put it around this bottom pulley and we left it off of this pulley here so I had to actually hook it with my fingers and as soon as we got as as much as that jack would press I had almost no clearance but just enough to force it onto here and we got her done so yep done. one of the most difficult belt replacements I ever did but we did get her done didn't we oh. <clears throat> that idler pulley is not easy to deal with on an HHR or a cobalt either it would be the hardest part the most tedious task all these stupid zerks back in this yeah <clears throat> now I get to rest and watch Bob put all the pieces back together <laughs> all, again all the plastic back together <clears throat> that was something else